Well, away from the camp, you'd never think he was a boxer, really. You know what I'm saying? Cause he never mentions it. He doesn't talk boxing. He just He's a family man when he's away from camp. You know, but uh, he is like a fish out of water away from camp. You see Tyson at his best and Anne at his happiest when he is training. You know, but uh, this is boxing. He's been doing it a long time. You know, and uh, all habits die hard, don't they? You know, he's a true, he's a true fighting man. He lives a fighting man's life. And when he goes home at the weekends, it takes him a bit to adjust. I don't think a weekend's enough, really. Mm. Um, obviously, since you've been back in Tyson's life yeah. uh, from from being away, um, you know, what sort of influences have you tried to put back into him? I know, you know, we've spoke about this kind of times before, Listen, but we, we all have crazy days, don't we? You know, we all say things sometimes. You know, on the spare of the moment, what seem a good idea at the moment, and later on, they're not such a good idea. But you know, Tyson is Tyson, isn't he? You know, he does. I can only say what I think to him is right. But he's his own man. He just does what he wants anyway. You know, but I try to steady the ship a bit. Me, I just say to him, well, "Listen, don't take everything on board. Take it as it is. Relax and see things for what it actually is." And he's good at that. You know, he sees the people what they are, like I do. You know, because I'm a man of few friends and that don't bother me neither. Because sometimes people don't like proper people, do they? They always want you to say things that please other people. But we just don't do that, we don't roll that way. You know, if a man's what he is, I'll say what he is. And if he's a good person, I know he's a good person, without even opening his mouth, really. You know, but the way it is, that's life. That's the way we live in the world today. You know, it's like, I don't know, in this country we live in. It's one of them, what do you do with people, you know, they just don't get on board, do they? It's a mongrel race we're living in this country, but at the end of the day, the gypsy, well, if you can call this a gypsy, we're travelling people, you know, there's a difference. But, you know, I have an home, you know, we have houses, we've got as good as anybody else, but do we get the respect for that? No. I've never had a job in my life, I've never worked for nobody, neither has any of my family, we don't do it. You know, God give me a brain. And I use it every minute of the day. I never switch off. Even in prison, I never switched off. I got the best I could possibly get of that through using my brain. Because us kind of people, we live in our wits. We have to live in our wits. You never let your guard down being a travelling man because you know the man opposite you has got other ideas to bring you down. And that's the way we've been brought up because we've never been accepted. If he won 20 world titles, he still wouldn't be accepted because... The gypsy man, he don't work for nobody, pays homage to nobody. The only homage we pay is to God Almighty, on my own father. But that's just the way we are, and we're just a different race of people completely. It's a culture thing. It's different to yours, it's different for theirs, different to many. We've got our own beliefs and we live to our own standards. You know, some people agree with them, some people not. Do you believe that Tyson perhaps doesn't get the credit he should get because of his background and his heritage and his... Well, listen, it goes out saying, doesn't it? Listen, if Anthony Joshua had gone the same route as Tyson Fury, he'd be having tea with a queen every night, you know. Tyson, English champion, All-Ireland champion, British champion twice, Commonwealth champion, European champion, WBC Intercontinental champion, IBF contest, 24 no, and beat good men. Not knockovers like the rest of these men's getting, you know, because let, let it be what it is. I'll, I'll speak straight from the heart, me. Anthony Joshua's a talented man, but in my eyes, he didn't win the Olympic gold medal. It was in Britain, or he'd never got it abroad. To me, he lost to the Cuban. But that's by and by. That's boxing. We can accept all that. But why give a man more credit than a man who's actually worked hard for something? And Tyson's worked hard for where he is today. He's fought people at like the best. Derek Chisora, one of the best fighters in the world today, still is. He beat him in his prime. He was unbeaten at the time. Who'd ever fight uh, Steve Cunningham? A fellow who'd been a two-time world champion and go in his own backyard and do it. You'll never see the Anthony Joshua's. You'll never see the Dillian Whites. You'll never see anybody taking chances like that. Deontay Wilder, he's had a title gift to him. You know what I'm saying? This kid's worked hard, tooth and nail for what he's got. He's come up the hard way, even in the amateurs. He was neglected in the amateurs and he poured his heart out for this mongrel race, this, this island in the middle of the ocean, this postage stamp was worthless. You know what I'm saying? It's dumping ground for the world. Let me tell you about it. He's given his all for this country. And what's he got in return? I hope you die, you pikey bastard, on the 24th of October. What's that about? You know what I'm saying? This kid, that's what the way he is. That's why he swears, because he's mixed up. Because he... Hasn't got his just desserts for the effort he's put in. Because this is a true fighting man. You could roll them up and they wouldn't beat this man. He'd, he'd beat the two of them, Joshua and Dylan White, on the same night. My son. 
believe me, take the back of hand to them, because it's a fighting desire. It's like we had it out, they talk about it many, many times, and we say, listen, this is how it is. These people here, they got bits of street cred through men. You know, but do you take Dillian White out there in that grass field here, look, pull his shirt off and let him have a row out there. Let him, let him have half his ears missing. Let him have the blood pissing out of him. Let him need a hundred stitches after an hour. Let's see how game they are then. He's prepared to do that. Is Anthony Joshua? No. Is Dillian White? No. Derek Chisora? No. Because they've never been in that kind of environment. I know what it's like because I've been there. I've watched it. It's happening. It's a cultural thing. And this is what, this is what gives us the edge. I know he can win. He knows he can win. That's why I don't give a damn. He don't give a damn about Klitschko. He knows that Klitschko what he is. He's a 40 year old man, he's a good champion. Take no credit away from the man, he's done well to do what he is. But can he go in the trenches like a travelling man, a gypsy man, a crossbred mongrel race of a man, watch bread to fight? It's in his genes. You can go back 300 years, we're all fighting men. You know what I'm saying? Is Klitschko. His father's an army sergeant or something, wasn't he? You know what I mean? Fetched up with a silver spoon in the mouth. We've been kicked up, don't we? We've been dragged up, kicked up from pillar to post. We've had to do what we can to survive, to put bread on the table. When these old kids had to go into the hospital and beg milk from to feed them, and some stayed before, wouldn't draw a dole. And I've never drawn a dole in my life. Anything. I've took nothing off this government, me. All I've done is give, and I've given the precious thing of all, Tyson Fury, the best thing to ever come out of this island, this rubbish dump, and yet they can't get behind him. That's all it is, a rubbish dump, a dumping ground on the people who run it just because, and they say there's no racism. I'm telling you about racism, it's never been as bad towards travelling people today. He's a good lad, no criminal record, never been in trouble. I've been in trouble. I don't care what people think of me. They probably think I'm a raving madman, this, that and the other. But I'm an intelligent madman, if you've ever heard such thing. And nobody can get things over me, because I'll tell you now, while we're thinking, while they're thinking about it, I've already been there and done it, because I've forgotten more than they know about life itself in general. But this lad here, he's listened to it all, he's seen people around him. And you know what? I say what they are, so son, the plastic people, take no heed of them. Does it really matter what they believe? Because what happens is, their heart wants them that much, it overrules the brain. And they hate travellers in that form that they're clutching onto floating logs, saying, oh, Joshua might be the man, he can do it. Dillian White, he might be to do it, because they want it to happen that bad, because they cannot foresee a traveller gypsy world champion. This man is the best in Britain, and them two can't, lace his, can't carry his jock strap, them. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way it is. Because he's earned his stripes. In the amateurs, professionals, whatever he's been, they haven't. They've had it give on a plate. He's a Commonwealth champion. He got a knockover for a Commonwealth title, taking nothing away from, from Gary Cornish. He ain't a proper fighting man. He's a big lump. You know, he's a woodcutter from the island somewhere. He isn't a fighting man. And he proved it because he would have got up. He would have got up and tried to do something. You know what I'm saying? He didn't. He accepted defeat. That's it. Because he's not a true fighting man inside. This man here, you see him on the 24th of October. What true fighting men do when they're losing. And I don't think he will lose. But if he is under pressure, you watch what he can come out with. He'll surprise the world, this man. But he ain't surprising the world because they already know what we've got up our sleeve. They already know what kind of people we are inside. You know what I'm saying? I done five long years in prison, never took an aspirin. All these men was crying, couldn't do the time. Can't do taking drugs here, getting phones shipped in. I never took an aspirin. I never broke any rules. Yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full for five years, never took an aspirin. I had the flu and everything went down to the medical centre, nothing. I didn't want nothing from them. I thought, you've got nothing to offer me. I'm here to do one thing, like I said to him, I'm here to do time, easier to fight. And that's what he's going to do, fight. And you'll see that come the 24th of October. John, you said <coughs> they can't see uh, a travelling world champion. Is it they can't see or they don't want they to don't see They don't want to see it. But let me tell you, you're going to see it and get used to it. Because he's going to be there for a long time. Because I tell you, these make-beliefs, what you're making out of champions, these paper champions, they ain't going to take my son. Because if not, forget Klitschko, let's have it now. He filled the O2 arena out. You know, my son can make as much out of fighting Anthony Joshua today as he can Klitschko. You know what I'm saying? But let's get it on. We ain't worried about these so-called Brits, these street gangs, these this, that and the other. We're not bothered. Because I could put my fist through them outside. You know what I'm saying? Because I could worry them like a Rottweiler on the floor and they'd be screaming for the mother after 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? So what can he do? And I'm an old man, 50-year-old, beat out, finished, with 200,000 miles on my clock. This is a young man. What's bread to fight? Look down his history. And that'll tell you so much about him, you know what I'm saying? You know, I fought Henry Akon without even training. Didn't do nothing. He was double, he won the WO title four fights later, 18 and 0. I'd, I'd done a fight for 18 months and as fat as a pig. I got in the ring and done a lot better than these men what's been in training camps. 
you know, I got beat, but I'll tell you what it is. I give him a hell of a row, and he knows it for three rounds. But not training, didn't do nothing. I had 13 fights in 10 years. And I don't think I made five grand at the lot. I'd done it because I like fighting. I'd have me tea, me bacon and eggs, or I'll have a fight tonight. Do you want to fight? Yeah, I'll go. This is where he's coming from. But he's had all the camps. He's got the brains behind him. He's got the experience. Where I've been had over and rumped to death in the boxing trade, I know what they're coming with, like my brother does here. Listen. Let me tell you this much. The Germans didn't lose the war through the troops he had. They lost the war through the brains at the back of England. Churchill. And he hasn't got one Churchill in his corner, he's got two. Me and him. You understand me? So I don't know how they're going to deal with that. Do you?